These slides have been provided for training purposes only. The presenter has made every attempt to ensure that they are consistent with relevant VICH guidelines. As always, the original guidelines should be used as the primary source of information for working with regulators. This is a training material for dissemination and enlightenment of VICH Guideline 57. This GL57 is marker residue depletion studies to establish product withdrawal periods in aquatic species created by VICH. There is a great variety of fish being cultured. Depending on the fish species, there is also a huge variety of aquaculture styles and husbandry practices. Thus, it is difficult to present a uniform residue study guideline that fits all of them. To establish the new guideline for fish residue study, the variety of unique situations for fish was considered. That uniqueness includes a variety of husbandry methods, major differences in living conditions, including seawater and freshwater, as well as warm water and cold water. For current aquaculture, the location of housing also differs, such as fish pens in the sea, a tank or pool on the ground with seawater, or a pond or pool for freshwater fish. Residue study guidelines were originally created for terrestrial food animal species, mainly for cattle, pig, and poultry. Those guidelines include GL46 for metabolism study to determine the quantity and identify the nature of residues. GL47 for comparative metabolism studies in laboratory animals. GL48R for marker residue depletion studies to establish product withdrawal periods and GL49R for guidance for the validation of analytical methods used in residue depletion studies. The GL46 study has been designed to determine the nature of residues and is based on a radio-labeled study in principle. This guideline describes the procedure to see total residue depletion and marker residue depletion. It will also provide information on metabolism and to identify a marker residue as well as target tissues for residue monitoring. The administered drug substance will be absorbed, metabolized, degraded, and then excreted. The absorbed substance in total is called total residue, and that includes drug substances, metabolites, and unextractable residue. Some metabolites are further degraded and are incorporated into the body and are no longer extractable. This is called unextractable residue. Thus, the residue assay targets the drug substance and or metabolites. This substance is called the marker substance. In addition to that, major metabolites greater than 10% of total residues should be identified. GL46 is designed to identify a marker compound, examine the total residue kinetics, and the marker and total residue relationship. In GL46, the total residue depletion and marker residue depletion are measured to determine the marker, total residue ratio especially at the point of withdrawal. This study is also used to identify the target tissue for residue monitoring. The GL47 guideline is to compare metabolism between laboratory animals and target animals. The comparative metabolism study needs only show qualitative similar metabolites. Parent and metabolites produced in the target species should also be found in the toxicological species. The toxicological species used for this study is rats in most cases, but could use others. For example, after the administration of a drug to a rat, the drug substance will be metabolized and metabolites A, B, and C are produced. Thus, during the toxicological study, the rat must be exposed both to the drug substance and to its metabolites A, B, and C. After the administration of a drug to a food animal, if the generated metabolites are the same or similar to the metabolites found in a rat, it could be said that the residue in the food animal contains the same or similar metabolites. GL48R has been designed to identify marker residue depletion after the cessation of treatment to the MRL, maximum residue limit, in target tissues, and provide information to determine the withdrawal period. 
This guideline encompasses the residue study approaches for most common species, including cattle, pig, sheep, and chicken. This guideline defines a residue study approach including dose formulation, animals, drug administration, sampling time points, and sampling targets. Out of scope of this guideline are the methods to establish MRL, determination of the upper tolerance limit, or UTL, and determination of the withdrawal period. Those procedures are to be provided by each regulatory authority. This is an example of how the data may be used to determine a withdrawal period. However, this is outside the scope of the guidance. Residue depletion shows individual variations with some animals showing more residue than average. For maximum residue estimation, a statistical approach is used to calculate UTL. Then the withdrawal period is determined at the time point when the UTL curve crosses the MRL level. The GL49R guide for the validation approach includes linearity from under the MRL level to the highest residue level, accuracy of recovery, precision, selectivity, limit of detection, limit of quantitation, residue stability in matrix and during processing, and robustness. The GL48R study was originally created to define the marker residue level in terrestrial food animals. However, since there are various differences between major food animal species and fish and honeybees, it was decided to create other guidelines for fish and honeybees. To develop this guideline, major consideration was made for the uniqueness of fish, including temperature difference and salinity difference. Fish metabolism and residue differ depending on water temperature. In the world, there are mainly two aquaculture areas, cold water and warm water. Cold water aquaculture is mainly done in Europe, North and South America, and Southern Oceania, while warm water aquaculture is done mainly in Japan, the Asian Mediterranean, North, Central, and South American countries. Another thing to consider is salinity. There are seawater and freshwater fish species. It is necessary to consider the great variety of fish species. There are so many fish species being aquacultured in the world, including warm water fish species, but also cold water fish, seawater species, and freshwater species. Not only fin fish, but also shellfish and others. Thus, it is rather difficult to conduct residue studies for all fish species in all different conditions. There are different husbandry practices. Seawater fish species are usually grown in pens in the sea, However, some species, like flounder, are kept in house pools. As for freshwater species, they may grow in pools with free-flowing river water or in a pond without much of the water circulating. Thus, those husbandry practice differences need to be considered. Major discussion during the guideline development was regarding several points. The first point was whether the study should be done for individual species, single order, multiple species such as in each order, or one study for all fish species. One of the examples is for the order of Salmoniformes. In this order, there is a huge variety of fish, but major fish in aquaculture are those of the genus of Salmo and Oncorhynchus. The major fish species are Atlantic salmon, coho salmon, and rainbow trout. Water temperature was the most important discussion point. Water temperature and residue kinetics correlate, and in most cases, the lower the temperature, the longer a residue can be expected to persist. And concerning this relationship, the degree-day concept was discussed. As the temperature increases, fish is more active and eat more, and metabolize faster. Thus, the residue peak is higher, but it decreases quicker and the withdrawal period is generally shorter. If the temperature decreases, on the other hand, fish is less active, eat less, and metabolize at a slower rate. Thus, the residue peak is lower, but it decreases more slowly and the withdrawal period is usually longer. Another point discussed was proper administration. It is important to calculate the actual dose based on dairy feed consumption, total weight of fish, intended dose, and feed remaining after dosing. The tissues to be sampled was also discussed. 
This is for the consideration of some countries where some parts of the offal are eaten. Thus, it was determined to separate common tissues, that is muscle, and regional or country-specific tissues, including various offal, such as the liver, heart, ovaries, or testicles. The purpose of this guideline is to design marker residue depletion studies in fish species for product approval. Firstly, demonstrate the marker residue depletion to the point of the MRL or tolerance level. Secondly, generate suitable data to calculate and establish withdrawal period. The scope of this guideline is to describe residue studies for aquatic species including finfish, shellfish, or other species, and then generate data for establishing withdrawal periods under the worst case conditions. Additional studies may be needed to cover alternative rearing conditions or other species. Finally, the study should be conducted following the GLP, Good Laboratory Practice. The test article used for a study should represent the commercial formulation or the final formulation which will be submitted to regulatory authorities. Those products should be manufactured under GLP conditions. However, both the commercial scale batch product and the pilot scale batch product are acceptable. For the preparation of medicated feed or other preparation required for the dosing should be made in accordance with the applicable GLP guideline. For the study, use healthy animals, preferably that have not been medicated. The study should be conducted at the target age or in the latest developmental stage since metabolic rate may be different from younger fish. Fish for the study should represent the commercial species and populations to be treated. Critical parameters for the study include water temperature, salinity, and housing. The water temperature directly influences the drug absorption, metabolism, and excretion. Salinity is another parameter, such as seawater and freshwater, and even for the same species, salinity change may have an influence over the residue. Finally, Husbandry practices vary a lot. Husbandry conditions should consider animal welfare following national and or regional regulations. Additionally, pathogens or parasites should be controlled to maintain the health of the test animals. Also, fish must be acclimatized adequately and maintain proper stocking density. Normal commercial husbandry practices must be followed as much as possible. Housing conditions include flow-through cages, racks, net pens, recirculating water systems, and or ponds. In each case, the study site setting should be suitable to prevent test animal escape as well as the entry of predators. Also, for the residue study purposes, it might be necessary to conduct the study under controlled environment conditions in a laboratory setting. And in such cases, the housing condition should mimic the commercial setting as much as possible. In a residue study, it is important to assure the correct feed intake and drug product intake. To ensure that, it is important to consider an adequate number of fish based on body size and fish species, which in turn is based on proper feeding behavior under commercial settings. An appropriate amount of good quality food with similar nutritional value as the commercial feed must be fed to the test animals. Density of the fish in the pen and the feeding method should follow the procedure performed under the commercial settings. Water temperature is critical for the residue depletion rate in fish. Water temperature must be monitored at least daily. Water temperature has seasonal differences and thus residue studies should be done under the temperature of worst case scenario. Water quality is also important. Water quality parameters must be monitored at appropriate intervals and water should be exchanged at a rate suitable to maintain the good health and welfare of the fish species. The number of animals used for the test should be large enough to allow a meaningful assessment of the data. At least 10 animals per time point is recommended. If the amount of tissue is not sufficient for the assay, for example, from one small fish, then tissues from multiple animals to make a composite 10 samples for each time point can be considered. It is recommended that animals should be euthanized at a minimum of four appropriately distributed time intervals. There is some biological variability in residue, thus if larger variability exists, then UTL will be a much higher level than the actual residue. 
If there is an increase in the number of samples, it could make the gap between the UTL and actual residue narrower, and thus it might result in a better defined withdrawal period. For zero-day withdrawal, could use single sampling time point study. For this study, a minimum of 15 individual animals or 15 composite samples to be collected. Absorption and depletion characteristics to be identified with the study such as described in VICH GL46. The sampling time should be chosen when the maximum concentration of residue is expected. For the multiple treatment case, firstly steady state to be identified. Steady state is the time when the trough value, or the concentration just before next treatment, reached to the plateau. Firstly, identify steady state and then identify duration of treatment, then after final treatment, sampling to be done at the maximum concentration point. Fish residue study sets for submission are classified into two approaches. The first one is to conduct studies for single or individual species. Another one is to conduct one or more studies for one fish order. In such cases, use representative species for the residue study of that fish order. The representative fish species and recommended water temperature are listed in Table 2 in the guideline. Table 2 shows the representative fish species in each fish order and the recommended target water temperature ranges for the study. Representative species are chosen based on the species being either widely cultured in a certain region or closely related to such a species. For example, to get the order claims for Salmoniformes, the representative species and defined water temperature are shown in Table 2. For seawater species, the representative species is Atlantic salmon and the recommended water temperature is 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. For freshwater species, the representative species is rainbow trout and the recommended water temperature is 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. However, in general, an additional study with the second species in the same order is also recommended. Treatment methods for fish are to include the drug and feed, administration by injection, or immersion. For the dosing, the test animal should be treated following the intended product label. The highest intended dose must be administered for the maximum intended duration. It is important to check that the appropriate water temperature is selected for the study to provide worst-case tissue residues. Feed containing the drug is the most popular way of doing treatment in finfish. In this case, fish eat the feed, and it is necessary to do the study so that the fish can demonstrate routine eating behavior under commercial settings. Also, feed consumption usually decreases when the temperature decreases, and that aspect should be considered. Also consider that fish can consume the medicated feed in a short time to avoid the drug leaching out from medicated feed into water. After the medicated feed feeding, it is preferred to retrieve and weigh unconsumed feed to adjust the actual amount of medicated feed consumed. Medicated feed should be prepared following the commercial feed preparation method and incorporate the test drug. In the example shown in this slide, a moist pellet is used and frozen fish is minced and then mixed with complete feed or fish meal. Then some oil is added. During the mixing process, the test drug is incorporated and then the mixture is pelleted. Regarding test drug medicated feed, homogeneity and stability should be checked for the validation of medicated feed preparation. Injectable treatment is not so often done, but if the product is intended for injection, it is injected according to the commercial practice. Also, the study should be done at the lowest temperature for a given species unless a higher temperature is justified. Some products are administered by immersion. Immersion is a specific and unique treatment for fish, and drug absorption may increase or decrease with water temperature increase. Thus, it is important to check that the water temperature is appropriate before the study. Following euthanasia, sufficient amounts of edible tissue should be collected. Sampling must be done for single individuals and cross-contamination must be avoided. Then the sampled product must be labeled correctly. The sampled tissues are trimmed, weighed, and divided into aliquots. If the assay is to be done at a different laboratory, then the sample should be divided into two appropriate amounts or send them to the laboratories. 
If the analysis cannot be completed immediately, the sample should be stored under frozen conditions up to the time of the analysis. If samples are stored after collection, it is necessary to demonstrate the residue stability during storage and up to the time of the assay. The tissue sampling protocol encompasses two sections. The first section is for the tissues recommended for registration for all species in all VICH regions. And the second section is for additional tissues required to meet with specific national or regional needs. The table on the slide shows the tissues required for all VICH regions from finfish to crustaceans and shellfish. For finfish, in principle, muscle including skin in natural proportions is needed. In some nations or regions, additional tissues are requested to be sampled to meet with specific consumption habits. This is defined in the table. If that is the case, edible tissue with the highest residue or a mixture of the whole offal, including kidney, should be sampled. For the fish species that produce eggs for human consumption, those eggs should be collected from a minimum of 10 sexually matured individuals. The sponsor is required to submit a validated analytical method for the marker residue study. The analytical method should be capable of reliably determining the concentrations of marker residue at the appropriate reference point, namely at the level of MRL or tolerance for the respective tissues. The parameters to be validated for the method validations are fully discussed in VICH GL49 under validation of analytical methods used in residue depletion studies. This is the first fish residue guideline applicable to all VICH regions, including outreaching countries. Still, many trials and errors may occur even from now. Finally, it is expected that this guideline will contribute to residue testing so that there is a good balance for collecting scientifically solid data regarding food safety and also care about animal welfare and will reduce redundancy of the animal testing. This training material was created with the support of the Government of Japan.